And ladies and gentlemen, this is my great honor to share with you uh, the uh, 20 years experience on the management of EB71 patients with cardiopulmonary failure. Uh, thanks to many research in the past 20 years, uh, we have progressed from total ignorance to understanding somehow the clear outlines of this cardiopulmonary issues. Uh, among them, uh, there are five uh, the most uh, representative uh, researches I'm going to uh, review for you. The first one is the, uh, Professor Zhang. Uh, she uh, observed, did a very uh, careful clinical observations during the 1998 uh, outbreak in Taiwan. And uh, she found several uh, risk factors here. And she also found that, that uh, the patients, uh, most of the patients had a, a distinct uh, clinical stages. Um, and based on this, we have uh, developed a clinical uh, treatment guidelines later. And uh, during the uh, 2000 years outbreak, uh, with the approval of uh, enterovirus ad hoc committee and uh, CDC in Taiwan, we develop, an, uh, we develop a, a treatment guidelines, management guidelines, according to the stage. We call it a stage-based management. We, uh, in the guidelines, we taught the clinicians how to identify uh, uh, which stages uh, were the patient in, and we taught them how to uh, manage and how to treat and how to support uh, the patients in the latest severe stages. So we did it for many years, and uh, the outcomes are bad. Uh, we have uh, found we found that the mortality, uh, especially the acute stages, mortality has dropped from 83 percent to 33 percent. So it works. And later uh, in uh, uh, Tainan, Professor Wu, their teams uh, performed the so-called flow-directed uh, pulmonary artery catheterization, so-called swan gums catheter, uh, in five of their patients, and uh, obtained many important data. For example, this is the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. So the red line is the upper normal limit of uh, patients, uh, of normal uh, people. So we found most of the patients, and most of the time, they have uh, a, intra, a high intravascular volume. And uh, this is the uh, cardiac index data. The normal, uh, most of the patients, their cardiac index are within normal uh, range. But uh, we can see uh, they almost all of them have a very high heart rate. So uh, a normal cardiac index may, uh, uh, means that they have low stroke volume. And this is the systemic vascular resistance index. Most of patients had a tendency the, the systemic vascular resistance will drop from early to late. And uh, this is uh, uh, Superintendent Professor Fu. He just uh, talked about this. And uh, the uh, victims of EB71 died. And their muscle, heart muscle is quite inconsistent with the cats, uh, uh, the myocardial injury from excessive norepinephrine infusion. And uh, uh, Professor Liu just talked about mirinone therapy can reduce the uh, mortality rate uh, significantly. So this is, uh, uh, I drew the picture to um, uh, describe the, the whole picture. The virus entered the human body, and it did two things. The first one is the 
inflammatory response. The second one is it attacks the brainstem. And uh, the brainstem uh, encephalitis uh, uh, secretes uh, a lot of uh, catecholamines, so called catecholamine storms. And uh, uh, there are three consequences uh, left ventricle dysphoric dysfunction, left ventricle diastolic dysfunction, and uh, severe vessel constriction. And uh, all these three effects will make the blood pressure of the pump lung vessels will increase. And combined with the uh, cytokine effect of the uh, change of capillary permeability and uh, the uh, fluid overload may be resulted from the resuscitation and uh, uh, the, uh, the lung will have pulmonary edema or hemorrhage. And uh, later, the uh, blood pressure will drop, maybe due to the depletion of intrinsic catecholamines. So uh, the vasodilatory shock will develop later. And uh, uh, but one in vitro uh, study tells us that catecholamine may make the virus more active and augment the inflammatory effect. So we don't know either it's because the intrinsic catecholamine or later uh, by the catecholamine we gave uh, the, pa the patients. But uh, uh, not all catecholamine will make uh, the virus more active. The study showed that norepinephrine is the most uh, important one. So by this picture, we can uh, try to design the therapy. Uh, if we have vaccine, it can stop the virus from entering the body. Uh, we use IVIG to kill the, vi the virus, or we can modulate the cytokine. Corticosteroid, we don't know. Uh, nobody do any uh, important research. So the fluid balance is important. We, we should not give more, too much fluid uh, for resuscitation. And early uh, murinone infusion can uh, prevent the congestion of the lung blood vessel. <coughs> we can use positive pressure ventilation, ventilation to uh, if the uh, uh, alveoli, abnormal alveoli gas exchange is developed. We can carefully use dopamine and antinephrine or even ECMO to rescue the dying patients. So this is a new uh, flow chart that I, uh, I drew uh, recently. Um, we uh, reversely put the uh, four stages here from one to four. Uh, the reason is not for just for rebellious. Uh, the reason is because I am a pediatric intensivist. In the past, past 20 years, we have seen many victims of ev 71 They died shortly after they were brought to hospital. So we don't have time to think. So if a patient is, uh, is suspected to be a EV71 infection condition, and uh, uh, we have to identify very early whether they, were, they are in cardiopulmonary stages or not. We have to ask the four, qu uh, four questions. Uh, are the organs in poor perfusion status? Or are the blood pressure is so low and uh, difficult to maintain it, even with uh, very high inotrop uh, doses? And uh, do we have evidence that the left ventricle contractility is very low, is very poor, either by uh, echocardiography or by hemodynamic if the, the answer uh, is yes, we have to report to ECMO team immediately in order to rescue the life. If the blood pressure is low, but not with a very poor perfusion or high endotrope uh, requirement, we can use our dopamine for epinephrine. But remember, we have uh, in, vitro in vitro study that uh, catecholamine may have bad effect uh, 
on virus uh, activity. So we have to use it carefully, not to use too high uh, infusion rate. Uh, dopamine less than 10 microgram per minute, epinephrine less than 0.1 micro per minute, maybe a safe dose. And uh, we can give uh, IVIG or Mirinol if not used. Uh, if the patient's blood pressure is okay, then we need to check if the respiratory system is about to uh, collapse. Uh, if the patient has apnea, low PF ratio, rapid drop of coma scale, and uh, with a cranial nerve abnormality or severe pulmonary edema, we have to intubate patient immediately uh, and give positive pressure ventilation. Uh, give high frequency oscillatory ventilation if needed. Give IVIG and Mirinol if not started. Uh, this is a video of a patient who is just about to enter a cardiopulmonary ventilation phase. You can see with the breath of his madness in his animal nerve uh, and nerve, the post wedding we can see the wet hair. And uh, we can see a uh, uh, desaturation to uh, about 80% of the CO2 and uh, very fast heart rate of 190. This is faster than the uh, if the patient is not in cardiopulmonary failure stages, uh, but in autonomic, automatic nervous system dysregulation, uh, we should not be uh, too happy. Because uh, if the patient in this stage is uh, actually he's in crisis, this stage is sometimes very short, maybe several hours or uh, even very quickly. So if the patient is in uh, tachycardia, or with abnormal heart rate availability, or with hypertension, hyperglycemia, profound, uh, profuse cold sweating, we have to put the patient in ICU and give Merinol. And we have to limit the fluid, uh, intravenous fluid therapy, and we will give IVIG if not used. Uh, so well, if a patient, uh, once a patient enters uh, the cardiopulmonary uh, failure stage, they will have very poor prognosis. Uh, a patient with higher coupling eye level, with a higher anotrope requirement, with a low blood pressure on admission, with a, a longer duration of hypertension of a low, very low PF ratio, we have worse prognosis. So um, it is very important to early identify the patient in crisis and give correct cardiopulmonary support. It's very important for them to treat uh, uh, patients in EB-71 infection. Thank you very much.